last, I finally started, and I finally, well, at least I finally programmed something again. Yay! So basically, uh, this is a version of a t update on my time table thing, uh, my time table visualization. I have, and uh, so I am going to make a giant poster. <laughs> we haven't got the poster yet. Because we haven't made it yet. But. Well, you're almost ready with it. we got to order it. Yeah. In the print. Uh, um, so, I've programmed, I made a version of my time table program. Uh, uh, it's a static thing. Well, obviously, because I'm going to make it into a poster. But, um, but so, uh, a static version of my animated times table, uh, which I can show you. Uh, well, the link to that project will be in the description. So if I show that project, that's if I run it, it's basically like visualizing these time tables, but I'm gonna visualize all of them. I'm yeah, I'm all of them are now static, not just four. Let's just show what you're working on. This will be the poster. I'm making the poster it's huge, two hundred static. Yeah, two hundred images. static images. From zero, well, I hacked a bit. I hacked zero a bit, which I'm going to explain in a second. But, and I, and all the way to 199. So, okay. The reason why I didn't do 200 is because 200 is the same times, uh, the same visualization as the time, the zero times. <laughs> so, and you told me that you'll finally tell us about how you actually made it. Finally, because. On paper. Well, <laughs> correctly. Because. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, uh, because I didn't actually turn, uh, I, uh, I mentioned modular arithmetic and that I used it in the program, but that's not actually correct. We, I didn't actually use so how did you modular make it? arithmetic to write the code. So, all right, this is how I made it. So basically I uh, used a geometric, um, Thing. So I'm. So this is the process of this me is good. This making is good. There are no other sheets of paper a left time in this table. Wait a sec. So, so first, I start by drawing a nice big circle. So you first programmed a circle. And actually, the program's mind doesn't actually have the points. So I can do in between times tables as well. Oh, it has like an infinite number of points. Yeah, it's a con uh, it doesn't have the points in mind. It has a continuous circle. Okay. That's clever. But how can you then tell the program to draw the, the lines and that there are points? All right, so I didn't program the points, as, as I said. So what I did is I had this horizontal line. Like the diameter. And so basically what I did is I assigned a number between 0 and 200 to an angle. When but you first had to tell the program that there are numbers. Because you just said that there weren't any points. There are numbers. The only thing is I'm assigning, like, for example... Uh, two and a half to this location here. But how did you do that? Or like uh, one and a third to this. How did I do that? All right, so. 
uh, the angle I associate with a, any point on the circle, any continuous point on the circle, it doesn't have to be one of these 12. Theta, uh, or 200 in the program. Uh, theta is map. So I mapped the two numbers. I want to uh, I want to map the two numbers I want to connect up with a line. Uh, call them I, which are a range between zero and I'm going to generalize this a bit. So between zero and I'm, I'm just going to say that for the number of points uh, to between zero and two pi, which is a range for angles. Right. Okay, so that you're basically saying, like, but wait a second, you said that you programmed it to 200 points, and I don't see any 200 here. Oh, that's the M. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. That gives me a fixed radius. I actually use 75 in the program. For the static know. program. So, so the radius here and, and the angle. No, I use... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, you use 75 for the static program. I use 75 for the static program, yes. So, um, when I use 75 for the static program, or 100 for the animated one, so in the animated, they're bigger. And so basically, that gets me a radius and an angle. I'm going to call the radius R, by the way. Well, that's inventive. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just pick an example like this. Yeah, that's the radius. And this is the angle. This is the theta. Angle. Now, I'm going to convert that to an x y coordinate by taking x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. Why? Well, if we go like this, then that's going to be a Right angle triangle. That's going to be a right angle triangle where this is R. This is... Oh my gosh. Well, R times cosine of theta, right? Because then that's going to be adjacent over opposite. So I have to multiply back by opposite. Uh -huh. So... So, no, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, sorry, so. Yeah, like the cosine of this. Uh, your Soka Tua, so. The cosine of this will be R divided so, by, no, wait a second, not R, will be this, uh, hang this on. divided by this. So you go, <laughs> X, X equals R times cosine of theta, and then y is going to be r times sine of theta, because you can do the same argument symmetrically uh, just using opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to go sine of r, r times sine of theta. All right, that gives me, that gives me a uh, coordinate. for each of those points. Okay, so that, then you get like the X and the Y for each point on the circle, on the circumference. But then you gotta connect them, right? You gotta, or somehow tell the program 
that. I just called the line function to the. Uh, okay. I think I think that's clear. Okay. And so I just do this for. And then I just uh, I do this for two values and connect them up. Easy. So you, you have like a second x and y. If you want to, if you want to know how it, if you want to know how I, um, if you want to know how I choose the two values, uh, watch my previous video. Uh, about this about the animated version because this is this is how you chose the static every time no wait a second this is how you chose both of them oh no this is for the animated version because it just goes on it covers the whole circle but how do you choose just, just yeah but one? i'm using them for both of them but can you show that in the code that i still don't understand how ah. do you uh, I just do this over and over again for different values of i. But I only use... F so I connect a value of i... A value of uh, i 0 to 0, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 6, 4 to 8, and so on. But... You, you didn't program for every single circle. I saw that you just wrote it once and you had all the circles. I wrote it once and I had all this. No, How did you just, do that? I just copied the code from the animated version. Well, you, no, I mean, that's not what I mean. I mean, you didn't do this for every circle from the 200. I did. No, you didn't. You didn't. I... But you didn't copy it 200 times. No, but uh, the for loop does <laughs> Ah, <also>. the for loop. <laughs> Can I see that? I think I thought already that it was something like that, but I'm not good at this, so I don't know what those things are. Not called. that, that, that one. All right, and that one. See? Because this is what I mean. You didn't do this for like endless for every circle you didn't write this program for every, for every i just image. used i just did it dynamically automatically uh-huh see this is this is really concise ah uh, all right one more, all right just one more thing uh, i had a little hack for the zero times table Hmm. Because when I did the zero times table, tested it out, instead of it giving me the times table, it gave me an error message. <laughs> <laughs> so. So the error message was that map Zero, 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 zero is called, which is actually not a number. You can quash a small range like that. Or small range like that. So I did put in a hack because the 200 type table is the same as the zero type table. I just put like an if statement in there that like if if the count uh, like I had a count going up for every single uh, times table, and then if the uh, I just put it in, if the count is zero, just use two hundred for the count. Otherwise, actually use the count. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah. So great. Thank you for this explanation, and I really hope that we'll get the printed version soon.
and that was, that's gonna that, that is gonna look nice. We already know that it will be 181 centimeters. It's gonna be a giant. <laughs> this is almost as big as Simon's dad. That's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not a giant, but for a poster, it's a giant. 